What is happening, people? It is Brian Alls, would never say.com, and I'm staring directly in the sun so that we can get this cool background for this video. But over the last two years of making bushcraft videos, I've gotten countless, countless messages from people asking which axes do I use, what instances do I use each one, and then how do I take care of them. So this entire video is going to be dedicated to my axes and answering all of those questions. Now, over the last two years, I've been very, very fortunate to acquire some very top of the line and probably some axes that seem a lot more expensive if you do look them up than what maybe you would expect to pay for an axe. However, do realize that a lot of the items I'm talking about here were handmade in Sweden, hand forged, and if you take good care of them, they will not only outlast your lifetime, but also the lifetime of whoever you give them to, and probably the lifetime of whoever they give them to if they're well taken care of. That said, if you are new to doing any type of axe work, or even if you're not and you just want to practice your axe skills, then I never think it's a bad idea just to pick up a beater axe from your local hardware store, because when you are learning these skills, you're probably going to hit some things that you don't intend to hit, or you're going to be driving this thing into the ground a lot, and you're going to mess up the edge and stuff. So I always recommend that people start with something cheap because you can always upgrade and then you won't feel so mad if you do end up messing it up and it's always good to have a beater axe around for if you're trying to get a stump out of the ground and you need to chop up through some roots and some dirt and stuff like that then you won't be so frustrated if you're not using your expensive toys. So with that said let's get into talking about the axes that you guys see me using on the channel. So the first one that I want to talk about is this Gransford Bruck American Felling Axe. So this axe is 31 inches long and weighs about five pounds and as the name implies, it's mainly used for felling trees. That's why you see a pretty slim head on it. Uh, the cheeks are kind of hollowed out so that you can kind of get really deep with each swipe of the ax. Now, I do love this thing, but I'll be honest with you, I use this less than others because I'm not always taking down trees, but I do also use it on the log cabin when I am doing any sort of cope or notch uh, to remove big parts of material before I get closer to the line and need to be a little bit more accurate, I will use this because this is great at just taking huge chunks out of wood. Also realize that any Granford Brooks ax that you get is going to come to you shaving sharp. You can literally shave with the ax. It is a lot different story than something you'd pick up from your local hardware store, but it is so, so good. Realize that the reason why these things are so sharp, you can actually see that mirror edge on it, uh, is because the less resistance you have on the ax, the easier it's going to cut into material, whether it be a log or your foot. So these you do need to be extremely, extremely careful with. However, you won't find anything better to cut with. It's like cutting with a brand new kitchen knife. How much better that feels than a nine-year-old dull knife, that's the difference in these blades. All right, so next up is the Gransford Brooks Splitting Maw and the Gransford Brooks Large Splitting Axe. Now, you guys can see the difference on these heads, how they're a little bit more wedge-shaped. And guys, the blade geometry for this is absolutely amazing when it comes to splitting wood. I've split wood for pretty much the majority of my life, and these are nicer than absolutely anything I have ever used. They also come, again, shaving sharp. You can literally shave with a splitting maul. So uh, this actually, the splitting maul is 31 and a half inches and the head is seven pounds. The large splitting ax comes in at 25 inches and I believe the head is around five pounds. So I use this to chop through bigger rounds, like the biggest rounds are rounds that have a lot of knots and things, tough things to get through. I will start out with this and maybe quarter up the wood and then I come in with this for the smaller pieces and I just split it up because it's a couple pounds lighter, a little bit shorter. Um, and a little bit easier to wield, so it doesn't take as much out of you when you're splitting wood. I could not recommend these any more than possible because these are so, so nice. I absolutely love them. They are expensive, like I said, and you can pick up a splitting maul for next to nothing. However, the blade geometry, the sharpness, and the weight, and just everything about these literally makes the rounds just pop in half. I love these. I would highly, Highly recommend. All right, guys, next on the list is the Scandinavian Forest Axe, which comes in at two and a half pounds and 25 inches. Now, I actually misspoke. The large splitting axe that I just talked about, that is a 27 inch handle. This is a 25 inch handle. Now, guys, this seems like a small tool. However, I use this more than virtually any other axe that I own. And if I walk into the woods, this is what I am taking. I feel it is superior to any sort of hatchet and also superior to any sort of large type of felling axe, like a 30 inch or, or bigger type of axe like that. 
Reason why is because of how light and just unique this blade is. It is more of like a felling axe type of head. However, you can use it for splitting up small material on a camping trip. The weight of it alone and the length, as you guys can see, it's about the length of my arm. If you're gonna carry something into the woods that you don't want to be kind of tripping over and getting snagged on stuff, then it really shouldn't be much longer than if you put it in your armpit, the length of your arm. So that is exactly what this is, and I love it. You can take down huge trees, you can split up smaller rounds, and it's just a super sharp, super usable tool. And it comes with me virtually everywhere, whether I am doing tree work, doing log work, doing camping, whatever it is, this guy is with me. You see him all the time on the log cabin build as well as the firewood videos. So I love this. If I was only going to buy one ax, this one would be it. And then let's talk about some of the smaller blades. So this one you guys have seen on the channel a lot. This is the CRKT Tomahawk. I actually haven't seen this for sale lately, so I don't know if it's out of stock. I do know that it went up like twice the price from when I bought it. But the beauty of having a tomahawk is this round handle because uh, I actually have mine wrapped right now just for protection, but uh, you can actually slide this off and use this as a wedge. The entire thing is 19 inches and about three pounds. Uh, I use this a ton. However, I will say having a round handle when I'm doing things like working on the log cabin, once it gets sweaty or my hand gets tired, I start to get a little bit of rolling when I'm doing a lot of hits. Uh, and then last Christmas, I was actually gifted this Swedish carving axe from Grants for Brooks, which is absolutely amazing. Now this is 16 inches long and 2.5 pounds, so a little bit shorter as well as a little bit lighter. However, with the handle just being a little bit nicer, I can get a lot more work done with a lot less arm pump and it doesn't really twist around in my hand. I absolutely love this blade. It is super, super sharp and aggressive. You can use it for just about anything. I've been using it for stuff on the log cabin as well as making spoons, splitting up small type of stuff for making kindling and things like that. So uh, I absolutely love this. I haven't had as much experience with this as I have the Tomahawk and I love the Tomahawk. I would greatly recommend both. However, you're talking about a drastic price difference between the two. So if you are on a budget, I would highly recommend something more aligns of this. Okay, so now talking about the care of my axes. I probably do it a little bit more than most people would, uh, but I enjoy the process of sharpening my axes and taking care and just make sure that they are very, very nice. Because of that, I typically sharpen my axes after each use and definitely after every other use. I, I don't let it get further than that. Uh, I just make sure to keep a nice edge on it all the time and do whatever I need to make that happen. Now, whenever you're talking about splitting wood and things like that, you're always gonna get some sap and some issues. Now, again, because these are hand forged and they're not like stainless steel or anything like that, you will pick up some rust. So if there is any rust or any type of sap or anything like that, just kind of coated on the bar, I will use very fine grit sandpaper, uh, almost like if you're doing like body work on a car, that type of grit. Uh, I can't tell you what the actual it is, but very, very fine. Uh, just kind of clean it up and take off any material that isn't supposed to be there. Now, if you do find yourself having some sort of rollover or chip in your axe or something like that, or you buy a beater axe from the hardware store or even um, something like this Tomahawk, when I first got it, this is does not come with a real edge on it. Now it comes with a better edge on it than you would buy from a Home Depot or something like that. However, it is not an edge that I would consider a really sharp, usable edge. So if you do need to put something on it, or again, you have some sort of chip or rollover on the edge of your ax on the blade, then I would highly recommend picking up a Nichols ax file. They're kind of like one of the top name brands uh, that you can get for relatively cheap. These work really, really well for just hogging off material. You have to be very, very careful. I would not, I've never ever used this on one of my Grants or Brooks axes because I treat them like they are little precious gifts from God. Uh, however, if I did have a big problem, I would use this. But to put an edge on a beater axe or to put an edge on this or any type of chips and rollover, as I was, use, as I was learning a lot of the axe work, uh, this became very, very useful that was relatively cheap. Outside of that, regular maintenance for your blade can easily be done with something like a Lansky puck. Now, that is nothing more than a wet stone that you can either use with water or oil. Now, I personally use nothing but water with all of my wet stones because if you use oil, you can't really go back to water, so I just keep it as simple as possible. Now, uh, all that this basically is is a hockey puck size sharpening stone where they have one coarse side 
and one fine side, and then you work the blade of your weapon here uh, just in a circular motion. If you guys need to know how to sharpen it, please watch someone more experienced because they'll tell you a lot of tips and tricks, but these work absolutely terrific. However, if you do want to step up your game, last Christmas I got the Gransford Brooks sharpening stone and this is a step above the Lansky puck because even the coarse side is finer than their fine side. So you go coarse to extremely fine. So what I like to do is if I have a really rough blade or there is some dings on my blade that need to be worked out, then typically I will start with the Lansky puck and then I will move on to this. But otherwise, typical maintenance for me goes coarse side, fine side for a little bit, and then actually I like to strop my axe blades. Now I know that is completely unnecessary and a lot of people are going to be like, why well, take time to strap your blades? Because I, like I said before, it is cathartic for me. It is, is meditative for me. I enjoy the process of stropping knives, of stropping axes. It gives them a really nice sharp mirror finish as well as when I go to cut into wood, there is absolutely nothing that stops it. So um, yes, I do strop my knives and all this stropping is, is just basically using some jeweler's compound on some piece of leather and then uh, going with the grain of the blade or with the blade, I guess, uh, just pretty much polishing it, right? So making it as smooth as possible so there's no resistance when it chops into the wood or your foot. And then finally guys, the last piece of maintenance that I do on my axes all the time is add some sort of oil, especially on the Grants for Brooks, because again, they are not stainless steel, so they will pick up rust and things like that. So you need to keep a light coat of oil on this, as well as on the handles, because when it is a wood handle, it will dry out and shrink and crack and break. So you need to keep it healthy. So adding, I personally use uh, linseed oil because it is what a lot of people use on cutting boards and stuff like that. And if I need to process any sort of food at a campsite with my ax, then I don't need to worry about it being like gun oil or anything else. So I try to keep with something that is a food-based oil that is also good for axes. And I find that linseed works really well for not only the head, but also the handle. And I even use it on uh, the leather head. I know some people say you're not supposed to, but I figure it's going on anyway. So I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Anyway, guys, those are my axes, how I take care of them, and what I use them for. So, like I said, guys, personally, I am the biggest fan of Grants for Brooks axes. I know some people like Wetterlings and some other ones, but personally, this is what I've used and I like the best. They are very, very expensive, but again, if you take care of it, it will outlast you, will outlast your future generations and their future generations and whoever gets handed down to as long as it is properly cared for. So it even comes with like the initials of the Smith on it so that uh, the book that you get with the ax, you can actually see who forged your ax, which is kind of cool and gives you someone to blame if anything goes wrong. So guys, I do thank you so much. If you guys have more questions about my axes or any other tools that you see me using on the channel, these are very easy videos for me to just make to help people out. So if you guys do have questions or concerns or guys, I am still very new to a lot of this. So if there's stuff that I need to know that you guys would like to tell me, then please leave it in the comment section down below. I love the sharing of information and I love learning and I love just sharing what I've learned and what I'm personally doing. So guys, I thank you so much. I will catch up with you guys later in the week. Until I do, go out something amazing with guys. Keep working on people. Be nice to each other. I'll see you then. Better be nice.